fantastic, don't you think? I think Bob Ross would be proud of us. Those were the beautiful paintings that so many of you did uh, last week, or over the course of last week, um, in tribute to Bob Ross and his birthday. I'm not Bob Ross. I am the, his clean-shaven younger brother, Danny Gregory. And uh, welcome to Draw With Me, where we are going to have some fun drawing and uh, looks like there are folks from all over the place, from Santa Rosa, from Massachusetts, Richmond, Virginia, Vancouver, and Florida, but also from the Czech Republic, and from Wales, and from Germany, and all over the place, and England, of course. Welcome. Welcome to Draw With Me. I'm glad that some of you were able to come for the first time to see us live, to participate live. Um, and that is really great. Part of the reason that you might have uh, known that we were being uh, streaming right now, that we were live, is because you subscribed to this channel. And I only bring that up because we just hit a landmark, a milestone, in the history of the Sketchbook School YouTube channel, 100,000 subscribers. 100,000! That's, that's like the size of, I don't know, a reasonably small city, perhaps? Imagine a, hundred, a small city completely filled with people who like to draw. That would be quite amazing. But 100,000 subscribers is pretty cool. What's the significance of it to you, you ask? Let's think about that. What is this? Why does it matter? Well, because it is great to know that we're not alone. It's great to know that there are other people out there who love to draw too, or who would like to love to draw. I think that's often the case, which is we like the idea of drawing, but we're resistant, we're hesitant, we're afraid. And so we don't. We're afraid. But what I hope to teach you to pass on to you is the notion that drawing isn't something to fear. It's something to have fun with. It's something to try. And even if you've never drawn before or you haven't drawn in ages, you could still do it. You may not do it well, but so what? Try it anyway. And that's what we're going to do today and every week. We've been doing this for, God, I have no idea how long, but for a long time, we have been drawing together every Thursday. I pick some topic. You can draw that topic if you choose. You can draw something else. You can just hang out. Whatever you'd like to do, it's fine with me. But uh, today is, as I said, it's it's kind of interesting that there's 100,000 of us. Also because I feel like, um, you know, during the last 18 months of nonsense that we've been going through, I think a lot of us have had the chance to kind of rethink our priorities and to say, you know what? I want to do something that matters to me. Life is short. And I want to look at those things that I've been pushing aside, looking at those things that I kind of have always wanted to do, but it was it, the time was never right. And now suddenly we're realizing the time is nigh. We must do it now. And for a lot of us, that's drawing. We say, here's the thing. Ah, one day I should take a class. One day. Maybe. Maybe one day you should take a class. And if you do, maybe you'll come to sketchbook school. Maybe you'll go to your local community center. Maybe you'll go, I don't know, maybe you'll buy a book. Maybe you'll borrow a book from the library. There's all kinds of ways to get instruction. But the most important thing is to just start. To just plunge in and start doing it. And that's 90% of the instruction that you need. I just gave it to you. Start drawing. Start drawing badly. Start drawing on a regular basis. And slowly you'll have more confidence and you'll progress. That's kind of what we're here, about, here to do. I know a lot of you in the audience know that. And I'm preaching to the choir. So yes, Cindy points out that 100,000 is the a tenth of the population of the entire province of Nova, Nova Scotia. I've been to Nova Scotia once. Can't say I saw anybody drawing. Maybe 
it's time to start. So, um, yes, and, you know, what's nice about reaching this milestone is, you know, I think, I think, I don't really know that much about the vagaries of, of YouTube, but I think that that means that they might be slightly more willing to share what we do here with new people. And that's, that's kind of ultimately why we're doing this, is to just get more people thinking about drawing and trying it out. So I would also say if you have anybody who think even vaguely might be interested in doing this, let them know about this channel. Let them know about Draw With Me. Why not? Okay, that's enough of that. So today, um, it's been a long time since we have done self-portraits. Hold on. Don't leave yet. Self-portraits are a really fun and valuable way of, of, of learning to draw, of practicing drawing, and of getting one of the other benefits of drawing. Because the ability to draw has lots of um, pluses, lots of things that can help you in your life. So being able to draw accurately, yes, that's one of them. It's a nice skill to have. could come in handy. But drawing also is a way of kind of interacting with the world, of looking at things and understanding them better by spending some time studying them. And what could be more important to learn more about than ourselves? I know a lot of us think, oh, God, I can barely stand to look in the mirror. I'm so old. I'm not 20 anymore. Hey, I had to shave this morning. You probably didn't have to do that. Trust me. It's not a pretty picture. But who cares? That's who I am. This is, who, this is unfortunately what I look like. You know, actually, come to think of it, I just a vague d a digression. I have been looking at these old home movies because I've been organizing them to share with my son and digitizing them and stuff like that. God, it's so fascinating to look at earlier versions of oneself to see. Yeah, you're different. Yeah, you're older. Yeah, you've got wrinkles. Yeah, you've got less hair or more hair or hair in different places, all that kind of stuff. But it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. You're not 20 anymore. It would be kind of weird if you still were. So part of doing a self-portrait is an opportunity to kind of look at that and think about it. But also to notice yourself, maybe physically, how you may be slightly different today than you were the last time you drew yourself. But another part of it is also... When we draw, particularly if we can kind of suspend our critical judgment and just kind of let it flow, a lot of how we feel comes out in the drawing, even in the quality of our line. Feelings that are hard to articulate with words, but somehow we're able to articulate them with drawing, with the quality of our line. There's some emotion, there's some feeling that appears in those drawings. And so when we're studying ourselves, we're able to create an image that is a reflection of how we feel right now. That's an interesting document, kind of like keeping a diary, but a visual one and an emotional one. So think about it. You don't have to draw yourself today if you don't want to. You know, I mean, Crystal says she looks so old. Well, I don't know, Crystal. I don't know, maybe you are old. It's better than the, the alternative, right? Which is not reaching the, this advanced age that we've all reached. But also, you know, think about, think about, like, in our society, I mean, this is a truism, but in our society, of course, we're always celebrating youth, you know, models and beauty and certain certain ways of being and appearing. But of course, we all know that beauty also comes from experience, from personality, from authenticity, from, from living, living in our faces. So if you can look at it that way, try and find the beauty in the experience that shows on your face. Let's try and do that. So, all right, um, let's get into it. And here I also want to talk about some um, a particular way that I want to do this. What I'd like to do is rather than labor 
over a drawing for a huge amount of time. I want to take, so I like to draw self-portraits. Some of you know that. I also like to draw um, in, with time to set a timer and to say, okay, let's draw for a couple minutes and see what we can accomplish in a couple minutes. When you draw quickly or when you draw with a time constraint like that, a lot of time that helps you to, to push aside the inner critic because you're basically like, you got to keep cranking through this. You don't have time to sit around belly aching and, and chastising yourself. You got to, I got work to do here, folks. We'll talk about how it sucks later on. Um, I also like working in, um, in sequence. So that's what I want to do today. I want to draw several self-portraits. I might try and find different ways, different angles, different approaches so that there's some variety. Um, I might also feel slightly different over the course of doing several of these. So we'll see how that affects it. So here's the thought that I had. Okay, um, let's have a look at this. So I've, I've worked in this book before. It is the, um, the Zigzag book by Hanamula. Okay, so, you know, Hanamula is one of our sponsors. They make these beautiful books and they, um, this one is, can you see that clearly? Let's switch to this other angle. So here it is. It's a book like this. And wah, wah, wah. It, it, can, it, it can expand, okay? It's not something you may have seen this before. But essentially what it is is it's a giant long piece of paper that's folded up and then is in this really nice little portfolio. Check this out, though. So here is something that Hanamula sent me as a gift. I think you can buy these, but they gave it to me as a gift. Check this out. Aww. Isn't that cute? It is a teeny tiny zigzag book. All right, it is the size of my thumb. Isn't that cute? But it's a zigzag book. It is, it is, what is it? Um, it is two inches by two inches, five centimeters by five centimeters, but it has 30 gram paper in it. Let's unfurl it and check it out. All right, so it's this little tiny one. Very tiny. So I thought this would be a really cool kind of thing to do some selfies in. Draw some selfies. I'm gonna, I can open it up like this and I'm going to draw a little tiny selfie. So I'm going to draw and draw a series of these little selfies and uh, work that way. So now you may not have this little tiny book, but what you could do is just make a square. Make a square um, on your paper and maybe make it this small. This is, as I said, two inches by two inches, so kind of the length of your finger. Make it that small. And that way we can work pretty quickly. And I'm going to use these Winsor Newton fine liners. I'm, unfortunately, I'm out of... I used to have O1s. These are O3s. O3s. They're black. And I have, um, this is an 01 that's gray. So I want to work small. I want to work small. But I don't know. I'm going to try. I don't want to work in gray, though. I want to work in black. So I'm going to try this kind of thicker pen than I should, probably should use. And uh, let's see how it goes. So I'm going to look at myself here. Now, you hopefully have a mirror. You know, you, But you could also like look at yourself on your phone. Turn on your camera and look at yourself on your phone. What's kind of good about that, I mean, A, it's looking at a photo, which is sort of, I mean, but it's live. So you could take a photo of yourself, but I think it's important that it be right now. That's kind of what I like about this. It's like, this is me right now. It's not a recording. So as a result, I am recording, I'm drawing me as I look right now. Um, all right, here I go. So, yeah, I mean, I like to kind of do a general sort of, oops, <laughs> I have kind of a lumpy head today. Um, that's okay. And then I'm coming down. And I, so I, I sort of like, like to just draw an outline like that. Actually, my hair is kind of lumpy today. I, need, I was thinking of getting a haircut. So, yeah. Oh, I wanted to set a timer. 
You know what? So let's set a timer. I have a, my phone over here. I'm just going to set a timer. How long should we do this for? Two minutes? Let's say two minutes. Okay. Set the timer going. I'm gonna look at myself for a second there. Handsome brute. Yeah. Certainly been illuminating looking at these old home movies. Yeah. Some of them are from before my son was born. Most of them are from when he was pretty little. So, I think he's, what, 26, 27? I can never remember. He's old. He's still cute, but he's not as cute as he was when he was three, let me tell you that. But man, that kid was cute. I was saying to my wife yesterday that like seeing him when he was so little, seeing that again, and uh, just trying to think, it's like that is the same person. He's the same person now, this big guy who lives in Los Angeles. He's the same person, but it's hard to look at that little creature in the, these movies and think that way. Think like That's the same guy. Look at myself, too. Like, in many ways, I'm kind of the same. But in a lot of ways, I'm like, wow. And also, I'm looking at myself from this vantage point, and I'm thinking, huh, you don't know what, you don't know what's coming around the corner, dude. You have no idea. You have no idea. You think you know. You think you know. But, of course... Life has some very interesting plans for you. Which, of course, is still true. I'm sure some future version of me will no doubt, no doubt, be going through the archive of Draw With Me and say, oh, look at that arrogant jerk. Boy, he has no idea what's about to happen. Maybe I won't say arrogant. Do I come off as an arrogant jerk? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Whatever the whatever the sort of pleasant thing I want to say about myself is um, one day. But you do get perspective on yourself from time. It's certainly true. You realize so many of the things that you worried about weren't at all the things that mattered. Oh, I've completely forgot about the clock. Okay, I'm just yammering. Okay, so it's probably going to be three minutes. Sorry, it's going to be three minutes. Yeah, I kind of got into doing this drawing, so it's taking longer. All right, I'm going to stop because I did say three minutes and I've... And I've cheated, so. All right, so there, there's, there's one version of me. Looking a little, a little fleshy, a little round-faced. But that's, that's the look for today. There's that guy. Let's take a break. Maybe I need to set an actual timer. Yeah, an actual timer. So what should we say? The next one will be 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Seconds. Okay. Okay. So, yes. Let us. Wilma has promised us that we won't be seeing her on the intro next week. That was my fantasy, guys, that we would have this cavalcade of your faces that would appear at the beginning of the next episode of Draw With Me. This wonderful, handsome group of people trotting across the screen. If not, maybe Wilma won't be one of us. Maybe you won't be either. But, okay. 
let's try something else. Let's try another page. And this time, here's what I'm thinking. Because I have the power of, of uh, technology, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an angle like this. So you see, here I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking at my computer. So I'm going to get um, a, a sort of three-quarter profile. That's what we're going to do here. Here I can see that I have my same hairline that my maternal uncle has. So you're looking at yourself from an angle, isn't it? Ah, good, the leaf blowers have arrived. Yes, this is a much less flattering angle. Oh my god. Yeah. What is it about the neck? It's the first thing to go. The neck. Do you have that when you take when somebody takes a picture of you and you're like, oh my god, look at my neck. Oh, I forgot to start the timer. God, what is going on? I am hmm, having some problems with these glasses. They are not kind of showing up the way they should, but it's okay joy of this process I was so I was so distracted by this view of myself I mean honestly how often do you see yourself in three quarters unless you have like one of those you know three those mirrors three-way mirrors my grandmother used to have one of those when I was a kid I thought that was the coolest thing I would stand in front of it and look at myself from all these different angles and pretend that I was some other person I've also made the top of my head really sh short so let me fix that Yeah, it's definitely a bit of a wake-up to see it from this point of view. But <laughs> it's kind of a funny look, kind of funny expression. Yeah, I'm going all in on the neck. Going it all in on it. Yeah, here I look kind of older and more feeble from this angle. I drew myself wearing like a big sort of 1970s collar, like some old guy who'd like still wearing these clothes that he had bought 30, 40 years before. Still perfectly good, what do you mean? I don't care that it's out of style. That kind of thing doesn't mean anything to me. All right, we're almost out of time. There you go. It's uh, it's interesting drawing so little. But there you have it. All right, three, two, one. Bongo. There we go. All right, so that was that. Was that. Now, watch this. This is something I'm very proud of. This is the other me. There's this me. And then there's this me. It's not really the other side of my face, is it? No, it's not. It's still the same side of my face, but it's from a different angle. So what will that be like? a little bit. Can I do that? Yeah. Oh, perfect. All right, good. Hmm. So yeah, so I'm drawing kind of the same, it's the same angle, but I'm drawing it. See, because I tend to favor 
When I'm drawing, I tend to favor the left side. Maybe you do that too, because you're right-handed. So as a result, and actually, I think what it also is, is when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're seeing the mirror, the reflection of yourself. Whereas when you look at yourself in a, in, yeah, so this version of me made me look a bit weird, but this side of my face is actually the same. So, whereas if it was in the mirror, it would be the other side. So, do you know what I'm saying? Maybe not. I'm not sure that I know what I'm saying either. This somehow feels better. I think it's because I like drawing from, as I said, from the side. So I'm feeling more comfortable somehow. It's an angle. It's something I didn't, hadn't really thought about before. I don't think I've ever done this particular thing of drawing with a flipped camera, but it's kind of cool. Because this is actually how other people see me. Whereas I only see myself in the mirror. Again, forgot to start the stupid timer. All right, let's take off a minute. Maybe when I reach 200,000 subscribers, I can get somebody who comes in here and works with me and whose entire job is running the timer. Could be, could be a very rewarding job for somebody. If you know somebody who would like to apply for that job, please send your resumes to sketchbookschool.com. How's yours coming? Are you just listening to me yak, or are you actually doing some drawings yourself? See, what's nice about doing these little tiny drawings, I mean, if you have a little tiny sketchbook like this, you can just whip it out and knock out a drawing in a couple minutes. It's not really a big deal. And uh, it's small enough that you can hide it from visitors. So if you go like, you know what I do? This is a pretty personal thing, me doing these selfies, and I don't really want to share it. But also, it's just not a big, it's not a lot of work. I'm also thinking that I might go back and, like, add some watercolor or some colored pencils or something like that to these, because uh, that would be cool. All right, that's it. Hmm. Do I want to do another one? Should we do another one? Let's do another one and do it properly. Um, but I'm going to go back to looking at this view. Yeah, because I think I've, uh, I'm a bit more comfortable drawing my head right now than I was when I started a few minutes ago. Okay, I'm going to remember, starting the timer, it actually started this time. The sketchbook was pretty big on the screen. I've got to say, it's not big. Not a big sketchbook. And I'm still drawing with a number three. Yeah, that number three was still... I like the 03. That is that is my pen size, I think. Sometimes the 08. But I'm. it's been a while since I've been in the mood to really draw with a small pen. I used to go in and out of that desire a long time ago. And I would say, you know what, I really feel like drawing tiny, tiny lines and tiny detailed things. But... Um, it's less and less where I'm, what I'm into now. Then periodically I would say, you know what, I just want to draw with really giant brushes and I want to do stuff that's really bold and not particularly detailed. I think the, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's because I need 
glasses. I didn't used to need them as much. That I don't like drawing small. I don't think that's really true. I think it's more, it's just, it might also be partly confidence. Sometimes drawing with a small pen can feel a little, a little tight, a little tight ass, you know? I'm actually enjoying this, starting to enjoy this now. Are you? Is it getting better? Because look, what I like about the zigzag is I can also do this. Go, oh, let's compare these two. Put them side by side. Or bring their strange friends into the middle of it. Let's keep going. Should we do another one? Draw another. Draw yourself another little square. Let's set the timer. And uh, we'll switch to the side now. Oh, I just realized I drew myself in mirror form for that last one. I hadn't even thought of that. So it's me looking forward, but in mirror. But the opposite. All right, so now let's do this one. Okay, I'm going to try and go more slowly now. I am somewhat worried about the amount of time that I have. Are you thinking a lot of incessantly about the clock? Uh. You, know, you can also stop in the middle, you know, even if you don't finish it. You can just have like a partial portrait, half portrait, half calf. What the deal is with these glasses? They look like kind of go up above my ear. I think they don't fit me quite right. Is what the problem is. I don't make these glasses anymore, unfortunately. So I'm kind of forced to stick with them. Wish that I could get a larger pair, but kind of grown to like like them. So. Sorry about these leaf blowers, they're really, really going to town right now. Oh no. Well, I'm not going to stop when I have one eye. I got it, I got it. I got it. I hear you. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about that one. All right, I think I have to do one more, I'm sorry. I just have to do one more and then I'm gonna stop.
See, I mean, this thing, it can become addictive. It can become addictive. I'm not, I know, I know in my, oh my God, really? Right outside the window. Idling outside the window. So sorry. Sorry, this is probably horrible to listen to. It's another thing, when we reach 200,000, I'll be able to tell the leaf blowers to go away. I'll be able to say, do you have any idea how many people are subscribed to this channel? They don't want to listen to you blowing leaves? Unless, of course, we just do a whole other show, which is called Blow, Dr blow Leaves With Me. Could be popular. You can see I look a lot more disgruntled <laughs> in this drawing, because I'm complaining about these damn leaves. And somehow that has sort of shown up in the drawing. It is cool because you think like, oh, if I set out to draw myself looking irritated, probably wouldn't be able to do it very well. But somehow just like, kind of forgetting about that, just drawing what I see, it somehow sort of turned out to be that way. Sort of interesting thing about the process. <laughs> there you have it. All right. <sighs> yes. It's like paper dolls of me. Yeah, so they see it was pretty quick to fill almost an entire entire thing of this. Of course, then you can flip it around and you can do the back. But it's kind of cool. So you could just do a little tiny sketchbook like this. There it is. It's done. You could do this whole sketchbook, knock it out in a day. But as I said, I want to go back in and maybe work on these a bit more, make them a little prettier. Spend, uh, I mean, I think the two and a half minutes was useful to me because it was, um, it was, you know, put the time pressure to keep the energy going. I want to address this. So the question is, Rumi, I'm not good at drawing faces. So my question is, how many faces do you draw every day? You just saw me draw. How many did I draw? I drew two, four, six faces. I drew six faces. Am I good at drawing faces? Sometimes. But not being good at something is just an indication that you haven't done it. And saying I'm not good at drawing faces is a definite problem. It doesn't help you. I don't like Brussels sprouts. You know, it's not, it's not like that. It's just because you don't do it. But if you say to yourself, I can't do it, I'm no good at it, you don't, then you won't do it. And if you won't do it, then you won't get good at it. It's this vicious circle. So anyway, I know you said that a while ago, and I hate to call you out, but Rob Gregor Richard. Yeah, I don't normally do them this tiny either, you know. I haven't took that sketchbook that I was working on. Uh, I have a whole sketchbook that I was just doing selfies in. Is it this one? No. Ah, it's this one. Yeah. Yes, so 
so, wait, let me just show you. This. I'll quickly flip through these. I may have shown some of you some of these before. But here, let me just sw switch around here. It's not that, but it's this. Bigger. Bigger. All different. So yeah, Rumi do one of those every day, at least. See what happens. Rob Gregor Richard says, I seem to be crazy about, too crazy about detail, so I don't put the focus right when I have so little time I can see. Yeah, so that's the whole thing about drawing quickly like this, is you can't focus on the details. You focus on the whole. And that's much more, you know, that's a much better way of getting a likeness. Because likeness don't necessarily come from details, right? It's not that. It comes from the f being in the flow, looking, seeing it, you know. Arlene says, I like the tiny ones because they're not so precious. Exactly. I knocked out six of them. I'm sure you knocked out that many too. So, All right. So now I want to share with you um, our sketchbook tour of the week. Every week, um, we show you a different sketchbook from a different person, sponsored by Windsor and Newton. And this week, I want to show you a sketchbook by my friend Jean-Christophe Deflin, who, surprisingly, is French. Jean-Christophe lives in Paris, and he, he draws... On his, I mean, he's not a professional artist or a professional illustrator, which will surprise you when you see some of his work. He's a guy who, um, he was an entrepreneur, ran an online company, just sold it, in fact. So now he's able to, a few months ago he sold it, so now he's going to be able to really focus on drawing, which is going to be great. But Jean-Christophe um, loves Hergé, Tintin. And he does these great, when you go to his house in Paris, he has this spectacular, like, giant, one of those classic Parisian apartments with the really high ceilings and the giant doors that slide. And you, you kind of come into this, you come in from the street, and it's like this sort of sandstone-ish kind of building, and you open the giant doors, and then you go up in a little elevator with, like, brass elevator that, like, the door slides. And it's so cool. And you go upstairs. We, we stayed there a couple of years ago, before times. We stayed there, and... Uh, it was so great. And so it's this giant apartment with room after room after room, all filled with books about drawing. I made a video once, I don't know if I've shared it with you yet, uh, about his library and about, I mean, he has every single book about drawing, about sketchbooks, about illustration, any, everything you can possibly imagine, comic books, every version of every Hergé, but also thousands and thousands of things. It's so much fun to be there. But he's really inspired by it. So, so, um, but his main thing that he does is he does beautiful travel journals. So he and his family travel to various places, and he does these beautiful travel journals, kind of in the style of Hergé. And he makes um, he they they're called Deflin. That's his last name. So he has this whole series of illustrations for um, a family called Flaflan. Is it flat, 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 flat? Anyway, and he makes things that look like the cover of a Tintin book, but they're about his family on a vacation. So it's like these incredible, like dramatic adventure type pictures done in the style of Hergé, but about his family. It's so great. Let's have a look at it.
so many things to learn from him, don't you think? Um, you know, he, great use of tonal paper, tone paper, confident lines, kind of a lot of it monochromatic, but sometimes when he uses color, it really pops like crazy. I love his lettering and I love his maps and his like aerial views. So good, so good. And that is, um, check him out. Hopefully you wrote down his, uh, his Instagram handle because you can see so much more stuff of his. And it's great to look at someone like that and go like, what can I steal from that person? What can I steal from them? And, uh, you know, he's stealing from Hergé. Stealing. You know how the French are. They're thieves. No. I'm just, he's taking somebody who he really admires, studying him, learning from him, and, you know, doing something really cool with it. So making it his own. And that's kind of what we want to do. So don't, don't never hesitate to, um, you know, to be inspired and to take that inspiration in an interesting direction. Uh, just a few comments that I saw here. Um, let me see. Uh, Heidi Sparkle Pants. I like your name. Yes, I'm glad that you stumbled on it too. So yes, so if you're new to this, we do this every Thursday. And we ask you to share what you do by putting it on, uh, you know, social media, wherever you want to go, or the schoolyard. Hashtag SBS drove me. I'll show you that again in a second. Um, what else? Karen K asked me what type of pen we're using. I was using, a, 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 it's not a number three nib, it's an O3. So it is a, it is a Windsor Newton O3. Fine liner, O3. And uh, what was else? What else? Chris says, how do you get so, go so different from page to page? That's a skill. I guess it is. Um, you know, keeping it interesting. Drawing the same old mug every day isn't necessarily interesting enough. Mugs. I guess that's my light motif, right? That's my theme. Sometimes I draw mugs of tea. Sometimes I draw this old leathery mug. But yes, I, I like to mix it up. And have, I, what I like about the idea of having a theme, even if that theme is self-portraits, is it is an opportunity to play variations on that theme. Draw the same old face, but draw it with different materials, draw it in different ways. And again, try to express how you feel. How are you feeling? Are you feeling green? Are you feeling hatch marky? Are you feeling fast? Put it down. Don't explain why. Just use it. That's, that's the fun of it. That's the, that's the expressive potential. Linda would love a workshop on that style. Well, here's the workshop. Go and look at Jean-Christophe Deflin's Instagram. A lot of times that's the workshop that you need. Because what do we need from a workshop? Sometimes we need to engage with the artist. Sometimes we may need to see exactly what they're doing. But a lot of times we can reverse engineer it. Look at what they're doing. Really look at it. Don't just say, oh, that's so cool, I could never do that. Look at it and say, what is he doing exactly? What are the materials that he's probably using? I think it's this. Let me try that. Oh, it's not that. Hmm, I wonder what else it could be. Maybe I'll direct message him on Instagram and ask him, I really love this drawing that you did. What were you using? But again, it's probably not about the materials. That's not what matters. What matters is, you know, the expression. And another thing about workshops that we like, we like workshops in part because they force us to focus, spend a few hours working on this particular thing. But again, that's something you can make for yourself. You can say, I'm going to commit this Saturday, spending two hours studying jean Christophe de Fleen, and I'm going to copy one of his pictures, and I'm going to see how I feel about that. If I like it, I'm going to do some more. So yeah, so we can be our own workshop leaders. Um, okay, good. Yes, I agree with that. Um, Crystal, I'm glad you like Windsor Newton. Doesn't have a D in it, and it does have an ampersand. Just I don't mean I don't want to be that guy, but they do sponsor me, so I do insist on correct spelling. John Cromer, only two kinds of art worth stealing and not worth stealing. 
sure about that. Okay. Um, Got to go practice. I like your name. Ooh, and I like your cello. So that's maybe what you're practicing. But maybe practicing drawing is good too. Hashtag works on Facebook. But you have to remember to make the post public if you want anyone other than your friends to see it. True. That is true, I think. I don't know. It has been a long time since I've been on Facebook. It is, it is, it is not, it is, I don't know. It's, I like being on YouTube with you. Here we are together. We're not talking about politics. We're not talking about stuff. We're talking about art. I like it that way. Um, Laura S. I look like an elephant. Elephants are beautiful. And I'm sure you have a majestic trunk. And, um, you know, own it. Own your elephantiasis. Elephantic. Spell that again for me, please. Um, seriously? You guys didn't see Jean Christophe's handle? That should be it. That should be something that we do. We should say, you know what? Can you identify the handle? Hey, here's one final thing I want to say. I don't remember it off the top of my head. <laughs> Go back and look at this video. You'll see it there. I put it up there multiple times. Would you like one of these? A little teeny tiny Hanahula zigzag sketchbook? You can go and buy yourself a gigantic one if you want. But if you would like a little tiny one, I have a couple I'm going to give away. I don't think I'll give away the selfie one. because I like it. But I do have a few, and Hanumila has been pleasant enough to give them to me. And uh, therefore, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, give them to you. Write to me at info at sketchbookschool.com and tell me why. Why should I choose you? And then we'll sort of kind of randomly pick somebody to give it to. Maybe a couple. I do have a, I have a few over there a compelling argument for why you should get this little teeny tiny zigzag sketchbook. And, uh, and I'll share the winner's email next week. Possibly a loser's email too. We'll see. There are no losers. There are only those who are, well, who are lucky enough to have this and those who are filled with regret didn't put more effort into their compelling email. Don't take it seriously. If you want one, I'll probably be able to get you one. We'll see. But write to me and tell me. Info at sketchbookschool.com. We'll figure it out. All right. Well, the time is up. Oh, yes. That's true. We're not going to be here next week, so it'll take two weeks for me to announce who the winner is. I'm sorry that I'm not going to be here next week. If you'd like, watch a rerun. God knows there are so many of these Troll With Me's going back. During the beginning of the pandemic, I did one every day. Every day we did. It was then, at that point, it was called, um, what was it called? Daily Drawing Party or something. It was the same idea. So there were lots of them. So you don't have to wait, really. You don't have to wait. You can watch any of the millions that we already have. Hannah, I'm so welcome. I'm so glad and uh, glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, Heidi Sparkle Pants, here you are. You've just arrived and now already you're going to miss the next week's. <laughs> Don't worry about it. In two weeks is Thanksgiving. Yes, you know what? Actually, I'm going to do one on Thanksgiving. It means I'm probably not going to be helping in the kitchen. Maybe you aren't either. But yes, we will do one on Thanksgiving. We will. So anyway, thank you for joining me. Thanks for drawing with me. And um, here's this. Thanks for drawing with me today. We'd love to see what you made. So please post it on social media or put it in the Sketchbook School schoolyard and make sure to tag it, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. Thanks very much to our sponsors, Hanamula and Windsor and & Newton. And if you'd like some more inspiration for your creativity, here are three things that you can do. One, subscribe to this channel, and you'll know when I make new videos, which I do every week. Two, 
Sign up for my free weekly newsletter. A lot of people seem to like it, maybe because it's free. And third, watch another video.